with Ryan Shumpert, BrentHubsVolQuest.com, Tennessee, as we go around the horn, the Volunteers uh, lose their first series of the year, Ryan. They, they pick up one win out of the series o- over Vanderbilt. What did we learn about this Tennessee baseball team this weekend? Yeah, it was a very interesting weekend for this team. I think you saw their competitiveness that we knew about on Saturday. Will Heflin, once again, has his, one of his best performances of the year after Tennessee loses on Friday night. Tennessee kind of kicks the game around with – gives up the three runs after having a two-out error there in the middle of the game and gives up the lead, and you think big blown opportunity, but they come back and have the big eight inning and get to come back win. But I think when you're looking at the team as a whole, I think you're – Seeing Tennessee needs to get more guys going in the middle of that lineup. Drew Gilbert and Jordan Beck have really been struggling, and you're kind of seeing the ways this lineup can struggle when they don't have those guys going. As Vanderbilt, as a whole, had a very good pitching weekend. Saturday was kind of the one-off from that with the bullpen struggling. And then I think from the pitching standpoint, I think you saw Tennessee be continue to be solid, and you kind of saw Blade Tidwell have his first, I'd say, real bad start of the year. We've talked about it on here the last two weeks. He hasn't been his best on Sunday but he's kept himself in the game. He's pitched well and given Tennessee a chance to win. This Sunday, once he gave up that two-out hit in the third inning to Bradfield and he had the speedster on base, he really kind of fell apart after that, for lack of a better phrase, gave up four straight hits and then got out of the inning, another hit to open the fourth inning, and that would be it for him. So some good things from Tennessee, but some things they certainly uh, need to get better on going forward. Uh, Lots to get to. I want to start with Tidwell a little bit first, uh, if we can freshman he's been he's been good all year long for the most part was this weekend a little bit big for him I mean opportunity to win the series today against Vanderbilt second ranked team in the country was this moment a little bit big for him you think yeah you wonder that maybe but the thing that kind of makes me think no is he came out so sharp he had his breaking ball really working probably the best it's been since the Georgia game for his first few innings he gave up solo home run in the first inning but besides that through two and two thirds he didn't give up another base runner had been really really good Bradfield got on base he was kind of playing with them with the fake steals and stuff and obviously I don't think he had the confidence in his catcher to throw him out with Pavoloni not out of the game so it seemed like he Vanderbilt maybe got in his head a little bit there starting with Bradfield because he seemed locked into the moment. He seemed dialed in to start the game. He had really all his stuff working for him. But once that happened, once Vanderbilt got a few hits, things really started to crater for him. And that's something that we really haven't seen from him so far this season. Yeah, I don't think there's any by any means a panic button to to be pushed at this point in time with him because he's a freshman who's been good. And we know what the back half of this schedule potentially can be for Tennessee as, as, as you know, this was Vanderbilt and a very good Vanderbilt team but when you looked at it heading into the weekend you thought maybe Sunday was the best day for Tennessee to get one and obviously they they get it on Saturday with the 8-4 win you got to talk about Evan Russell you've seen baseball you've seen a lot of Tennessee baseball there uh you followed it around we talked about it after the Vanderbilt game or or, excuse me the LSU series you know you hit three home runs pretty special to do it twice in a year and, and to be basically the offense for Tennessee on Saturday was pretty remarkable to watch Yeah, it really was. The fact that he's done it in two huge games, but the fact that he's done it against two um, really good pitchers, guys that are going to go in the top 10 of the draft and Jack Leiter and Jaden Hill. He's hit four home runs off those guys this year. And it's it's really just been crazy to watch because he's been better, you know, between the LSU game, the LSU series and the Vanderbilt series, but he still hasn't been great. Still entered Saturday's game hitting under 200, wasn't in the starting lineup Friday night. And for him to have multiple three home, home run games, it's just, it's just remarkable. And then he got, another home run again today on Sunday. So I think he's at 21 hits on the year with 10 of them being home runs. And that just really hasn't been his MO, but it shows how crazy uh, of a season he's had and how much he raises, rises up into big moments that he simply hasn't been as effective as he's been his previous three years, but in two really big games, he was the bulk of Tennessee's offense. And you going back and looking at that big, I don't know you want to praise him for getting hit by a pitch, but Connor Pavlone getting hit by that pitch took away the chance of Vanderbilt just to put him on first base, which I think would have been what they would have gone to, made them uh, face Evan Russell and then credit Evan Russell. He walked into that box with this place going crazy and was ready on the first pitch breaking ball and jumped on it for to go go ahead home run. Tony Vitello said after the game today that Pavlone is kind of day by day. How big is it for Tennessee to get him back on the field for this team? Yeah, I think it's – first I'd say he said it day by day, but it's 
to maybe call it week by week. He said he's got a brace on it. He's got to get out of that. Then he's got to be practicing. Then we got to get him some live reps. Then he's going to be back. So I, you certainly won't see him at the midweek. The way he laid that timeline out, I wouldn't think you would see anything from him next weekend at Texas A&M. That's obviously not a given. We'll see how he progresses. But I think it's really big defensively. And you saw that today with Vanderbilt still in six bases. And some of that, Bradfield wasn't getting on base the first two games. And he got on base three times a day and stole four bases in the process. He's the best uh, base stealer in the SEC, one of the best in the country. So that's part of it. That's not just that number is not indicative of Jackson Greer's true talent behind the plate, but it is no doubt a drop off. And teams are going to be able to test Tennessee a lot more with Greer behind the plate than Pavoloni. But Greer also did some good things at the plate. They had two walks and a home run. So I think when you're looking comparing to what they do at the plate, I don't think it's really a big drop off. But behind the plate, what Pavoloni does, the connection he has with Tennessee's pitchers on top of his arm and his ability to throw out a base runner stealing is a really big drop off from him to Greer. Vitello said after the, the game that, you know, he managerial decisions on Sunday wasn't very good. His team didn't show up on Sunday the way that they needed to. But there was so much for this team to learn from this weekend. What, what do you think he meant from that? Because I don't, I don't know how many managerial mistakes that were made on Sunday. But what do you think he meant by his team um, learning from this weekend and how much this weekend is going to benefit this team down the stretch run of this season? Yeah, I think it was a bit of a, of a positive spin on things. And he talked about just the atmosphere, playing in front of a packed crowd, top five matchup. You know, this program hasn't been here. And, you know, we talked about it on Friday leading in that the Florida series was huge and everything was hyped up. But this love, this weekend was just a whole other level of that. And then some of the other things I think that he was taken from it, as you looked at today's game, eight runs from Vanderbilt with two outs. You got to close the door when good teams uh, have opportunities. And, that's the thing, looking at this series, I know this isn't exactly what you asked about, but last weekend, Florida made a lot of mistakes and Tennessee capitalized on it. Vanderbilt didn't make hardly any mistakes this weekend. Maybe a few pitches they threw to Evan Russell, but that's about it. They were really good, really good in the field. They made Tennessee earn it. And I think it's kind of seeing what it takes to beat a really good team, seeing that those errors are going to come back to bite you. You have to be clean in the field. You can't hang two strike pitches when you're ahead in the count and that you really have to take advantage of your opportunities because – while Tennessee did that, they did take advantage of their opportunities against Florida. The amount of opportunities they got probably wasn't indicative of what you're going to see against typical top five, top 10 competition. Vanderbilt did that all weekend. They gave Tennessee their best shot. And they, you know, we talked about it. You would think they're going to bounce back really strong from their first weekend loss of the year. And they did. I thought Vanderbilt played really good all weekend. And Tennessee got a, a great measuring stick of where they're at right now. Yeah, Rocker was phenomenal on Friday night, and, and Chad Dallas was really good, too. It just – Rocker yeah. was that much better. Um, Heflin was really good on Saturday. I thought his best outing of the year. The question moving forward now is how does this team, do you think – how do they handle themselves the back half of the season? Here's Texas A&M, a road trip. The Aggies are struggling a, a good bit. Some things seem to open up a little bit for Tennessee. Can this team take full advantage of that? Do you believe this team is – is capable and, and, and in a position that they can deal with success and suddenly being the hunted. I mean, this is going to, they're going to be the favorite team on a road series at Texas A&M. I mean, can this team handle what's in front of them down the stretch? Yeah, that's, there's no doubt about that. Their next three series are going to be clear favorites against Texas A&M, Kentucky and Missouri. And I think this team can handle it. I do, but it is, it's a different level. It's a different, from handling the success last weekend, because obviously they're going to be up for Florida. They're going to be up for Vanderbilt. How could you not be? It's different when you're getting an A&M team that's looking like their coach may get fired at the end of the year. And then two teams in Kentucky and Missouri certainly don't have the pedigree of, of some SEC programs. But this team, you know, they haven't given me any reason to doubt that they could handle it. Vitello is going to keep their, their focus in the right spot, I think. And, you know, it is a lot of there are a lot of young players on this team, but it's still a lot of veterans, a lot of veteran guys, a lot of guys that have been around the, the block a few times. And it's weird to say that with Tennessee not having a ton of success in the past, but a lot of guys that know SEC baseball, a lot of guys that know you have to bring it every single week or you can very easily lose a series to a team you're better than. Well, there's no shame in losing this series to Vanderbilt, in my opinion, because I, I think Vanderbilt's really good. Uh, Tennessee found a way and had a great day on Saturday um, didn't get done what they needed to get done on Sunday. But um, I, I don't think that there's any reason to suggest that this team is overrated or overvalued. I think Vanderbilt's really that good. And uh, I do, th I'm with Tony Vitello. I think there's a lot to learn from this series. It's going to be fascinating to see if this team can stay healthy, Ryan, and if this team can learn 
to take full advantage of whatever opportunities are placed in front of them, particularly against teams that don't give you a ton of opportunities. Yeah, exactly. And you go back two weeks ago, you tell Tennessee fans are going to get through to Florida and Vanderbilt stretch three and three. You take it every time. But, you know, looking back, they had a chance late in the game to sweep Florida. And then you get the Sunday, which you mentioned earlier, is the game kind of going in. You have the most confidence you can win with a chance to take the series against Vanderbilt. There's certainly uh, still some missed opportunities in a good two weeks and plenty of things to learn, plenty of areas to get better uh, going forward and getting ready for the back half of SEC play. All right, my last question, we're out the gate. How, how good was the atmosphere this weekend? It was, it was very good. I mean, you know, I've just been here three years. Obviously, last year, didn't get to SEC play. Top, best two series my freshman year, I saw the Ole Miss and Georgia series. Those places were packed. Lindsey Nelson was packed for both those series. But it was nothing like this weekend. And really, what was so great, I think, about the environment this weekend, it was all three games, which were really good environments. And some of that is to say, you know, good weather helps out a lot. They really haven't had a whole lot of series this year where they've had three straight days of good weather. But from first pitch Friday to – when things kind of escalated on Sunday and Vanderbilt really stretched out the lead. These Tennessee fans were very loud. They were in the game consistently, and it definitely had a different gear to it. I mean, you saw Tim Corbin talking about it in his postgame press conference, it, saying there was no COVID in Knoxville this weekend. It, it didn't seem like it with the fans at Lindsey Nelson Stadium, and that was only with 50% attendance. So I think that says a lot about the way this uh, fan base has been able to kind of get involved and jump into baseball with the success that Vitello is having. And because they weren't just here. They were in the game, and it certainly made their impact felt. Well, disappointing for Tennessee that they couldn't find a way on Sunday to, to steal a series against Vanderbilt, but certainly Tennessee proved uh, that they can line up and play with the Commodores uh, on Saturday and even on Sunday. They just didn't take advantage of some early opportunities in that game. And as for Coach Corbin, I think that was a little message to the fine folks at that in Nashville. Hey, I'd like to have some yeah. people in my stands because – we're getting tired of going to everybody else's venue, getting their best shot, and we can't get anybody in our ballpark. But uh, Tennessee gets one of, of three this weekend and obviously goes on the road to take on Texas A&M. We'll have full coverage of that coming up next weekend, previewing that, and we'll have the 3-2-1 with Ryan tomorrow as well as this Tennessee baseball team remains in the hunt in the SEC East for sure and remains in the hunt for a regional bid as well. That's going to do it for this edition of Around the Horn. He's Ryan Shepard, and I'm Brent Hubbs. Have a great rest of your Sunday, everybody.